Hello everyone. It has been a minute again, I know, since I sat down in front of this camera and filmed a video about books because having a baby takes a lot of my time and working full time also takes a lot of my time. Who even knew? So that's why you haven't seen much of me. My baby's now eight months old and she is just the light of my life, obviously, and she's so amazing and it's just a privilege to watch this little human grow up and learn all about the world and stuff. Again, needless to say, that's why I haven't been around as much as I wanted to. I just have been drained and haven't had time, like literally haven't had any physical time or the emotional capacity or mental capacity to film, plan, edit videos. So that's why I haven't been around. And I'm really excited to film videos again. I am filming like four today. And this is the first one and I'm really excited about it. I'm gonna get it done, it's gonna happen, and I'm gonna have content again on this channel and I am so excited. So I thought I would dive back in after having my little break from booktube into talking about some five star predictions of mine. I just really love this video. I love watching other people do it and I, you know, just like some other people have said, I do obviously buy and think about and put books on my TBR with the hope that they'll all be five star reads. Like that's, you don't ever pick a book up thinking, oh, I'll probably get this two stars, but I'm gonna pick it up anyway. That just doesn't happen. And I, I do hope that I genuinely love everything I read, obviously, but these are the books that I have seriously high expectations to rate them, five stars. So since there's quite a stack of them, I'm gonna go ahead and jump right in. So first I have A Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers. I don't know too, too much about this except that it is a sci-fi book with a lot of LGBTQ plus representation and that it's very literary despite being a like science fiction book, but everybody I watch who has read this has absolutely loved it and I don't read much science fiction so I think that this will be one a great way for me to access the science fiction genre because it is a little bit more literary and because I'm such a fan of the diversity in it and two because I think I'm gonna love it because everybody else has loved it so far so it seems like a really quality book which again makes it uh, more likely for me to enjoy it despite being a science fiction book so I really think that I'll give this five stars just based on everything I've heard and the very little that I know about it. Ooh, okay, I just knocked my camera and I really thought it was gonna fall over. It's perched very precariously on a bunch of books here and I really thought that we were just done, that I was just done for but I have some luck apparently. But my next book that I want to talk about that I think I'm going to give five stars to is Missoula by John Krakauer. This is the same author who wrote um, Under the Banner of Heaven and I think Into the Wild too. Um, he writes primarily and I think exclusively nonfiction. Um, I think that he acknowledges that rape is a prevalent crime throughout like the whole country but in particular in Missoula in their university campus there was I think like a four-year stretch it said where there was a lot of um, rape and there just you know was not much investigating happening and so uh, John Krakauer went back in and um, is trying to talk about why th this is happening and how it's happening because of like rapists and the culture not because of anything the women are doing not because they're asking for it or um are sending like you know vibes out or whatever that they want this not that they want rape but that they want the sexual action and he's trying to i think prove that by writing this and really going in in depth about it if you've watched my channel for any time you know that I'm always trying to read as much fiction and non-fiction books about rape culture. It is a huge huge uh, bookish goal of mine like all the time and so this is a really well not really well known one but a lot of people are reading this right now with the Me Too movement and stuff and it's one of the more well known and kind of respected non-fiction books about it and I think it's just respected because so many people know about it because it's got John Krakauer on it. There are a bunch of other nonfiction books about rape culture. I will be happy to make a video on that if you guys are at all interested. I've read a bunch of them, so I um, would like to have more of them known than just this one. So if you guys are interested in that, let me know. But I, I think based on this content and the research done and the message it's trying to say, I do think I'm going to give this five stars. In the same sort of vein of rape culture, I have a fiction book here by Aaron Hartzler called What We Saw. This is about a rape that happens at a party. And basically when the main character 
charges, I think, like, a whole group of friends, of three or four friends, with assaulting her. Um, the whole, like, school and the whole town is basically, you know, like, oh, they would never do this, and she still is, is trying to do what's right, and and trying to sh say that, no, hey, this really happened to me, even though I don't remember much of it because, you know, I was drinking at the party, it did happen to me. So it's all about, like, credibility and getting, um, like, witnesses and stuff and trying to build this case, basically. And I just am, again, really interested in this because it's a fictional rape culture book and I haven't read this one yet. And I mostly in have been rating lately um, these kinds of book five stars just because I've been very picky about the fiction rape culture books that I pick up and that has made more of them be five star reads than they had been previously. Next I have a book that I seriously cannot believe I haven't read yet and that is The Nightingale by Kristen Hanna. Everybody and their mother has read this book. It is a World War II book and it is apparently just like a work of art. I have not read this. I know a lot of family members and friends whose genre this is right up, this World War II historical fiction. And so I've recommended it to people and they love it and they bring it back to me. This book has, I've, been, I've given this copy, my copy of this book to like four different people and haven't read it myself yet, even though they've all said it's really wonderful and amazing. I'm sure that most people know about this book and just know that it's, you know, World War II historical fiction. So I'm not going to go into any more detail than that, but it is very well loved, high praise, and I anticipate giving this five stars when I do read it. Next is Labyrinth Lost by Zoraida Cordova, which I, again, for personal, like, reasons, I'm ashamed I haven't read yet. This hits so many of my bookish buzzwords, which is a video coming up soon, my bookish buzzwords, just FYI, a little plug there. Bisexual main character, Latinx main character, magical realism, like, everything. That's my favorite genre, my favorite character type, like, my favorite everything. So why haven't I read this? What am I even doing that I haven't read this yet? And obviously, like, given what it's about, probably gonna get five stars from me. So just, I need to read it. I need to read it. Next we have kind of a modern classic book that, again, I'm super ashamed of given what I told you guys about how I love reading. Not love reading, that sounds terrible, but how I am interested in reading rape culture books. Um, I have Speak by Lori Halls Anderson, which is just like a staple of fiction in young adult, like let alone in like, rape culture fiction, like in young adult. I have not read this. I ha I haven't read it and I'm so upset about that. I'm almost 100% sure that I'm going to read this this year, but I do definitely think I'm going to give this five stars just because of what it is. It's speak. Like, of course, I'm probably going to give it five stars. So I just, I have to read this this year for sure. Next, I have a book that I honestly completely forgot about until I was coming up with my list of books for this video, and that is Hounded by Kevin Hearn, which is the first book in the Iron Druid Chronicles. I was recommended this book by a customer back when I worked and managed a bookstore, and they recommended it to me because I told them I like mythology and mythological fiction books, and I am a huge fan of Red Rising, and then so they're like, oh my god, you have to read the Iron Druid Chronicles by Kevin Hearn. And it's like seven books and a couple novellas, so it could keep me going for a long time, and I really only know that, from my understanding of this, that that is basically like an American gods type of story, but with only Norse mythology. And the main character's name is Atticus, which like, fantastic. I love it. To Kill a Mockingbird is my favorite book of all time. He owns a bookstore, I think. So wh what am I, again, even doing? This sounds just so up my alley. It sounds like an action-packed, super awesome book that I could just speed through and speed through the rest of them. I literally own the first five of these books and I think I'm gonna love them. I think I'm gonna give this five stars and haven't done anything about it. I keep buying other books, even though I have like five books in a series that I need to read here. Get it together. This whole book is just gonna be about me shaming myself because this next one is the second book in the Remnant Chronicles, Heart of Betrayal by Mary E. Pearson. The first book I read and gave five stars because like it's maybe my top five YA fantasy books of all time. The first book was just my everything. So obviously I'm pretty positive I'm gonna give this five out of five stars. Okay, we're down to the last three. And the first one is Daughter of Smoke and Bone by Lainey Taylor. I just finished reading Strange the Dreamer by Lainey Taylor, which was my first ever book of hers. And it was exquisite. It was delicious writing. I wish I could write as intricately and magically as she did. I, it took me so long to read Strange the Dreamer because I kept having to pause it because 
I was so in love with the sentence that she had just written that I had to like take a minute and digest it and sit with it and just love it and it, it was incredible it was an incredible piece of work I gave it five out of five stars this is also like a fantasy mythological type book and everybody knows this book this book has been around forever everybody and their mother on booktube has read it again I highly anticipate that I'm gonna give this five stars and it is in my top 10 books to read this year which is another video that you will be seeing very soon all right guys I swear we're almost done second to last I have Shadow and Bone, the first book of the Grisha Trilogy by Leah Bardugo. Yes, I know, this is awful. Again, very similarly to Daughter of Smoke and Bone. Have not read this very hyped series that everybody, again, has read. And I also haven't read the Six of Crows duology because I'm awful. So this is an incredible series everybody loves. I think I'm going to give it five stars because, like, it's hyped for a reason also in my top 10 to read this year. And finally, probably the book that I'm most ashamed that I haven't read yet, but still think I'm going to give five stars to, that I am going to be reading absolutely next when I finish the book that I'm currently reading is Just One Year by Gail Foreman, the sequel to my favorite book maybe of all time, Just One Day. Still haven't read this. It's been in my top 10 TBR for like three years straight now and I haven't done it. Like I said, Just One Day was my favorite young adult book maybe of all time. Gave it five stars. Uh, Gail Foreman's my favorite young adult author. For all of the reasons, I'm obviously going to probably get this five stars, and this needs to be read, like, within the next month, or else I have to suffer the consequences. So there you have it. There are some books in my bookshelves that I think that I am going to be rating five stars when I do get around to reading them, which needs to happen soon. Let me know what some books that you think are going to be five star predictions for you down in the comments, and I will see you guys on my next video. Happy reading! <laughs>